Welcome to another episode of Modern Bok. Thank you for joining me. So yeah, um, I just want to cover today some of the players that I think are worth looking at, worth focusing on when it comes to the upcoming uh, Autumn Nationals. It's going to be very interesting. I think there's a couple of great games and a couple of interesting things to see as I, as I said in my previous video. Really tough games with Africa and I think everybody it's just going to be impressive uh, all, all round, I think. Okay, if you do, if you do like my videos, please share, please comment, please like. Yeah, and uh, let's talk about these players. Let's bring other players into the conversation down below. If you feel there's anything else you want to bring into the conversation, cool. Uh, first things first, I just want to congratulate uh, Pio Diante on being uh, nominated for best upcoming player for the Springboks this year. I think he totally deserves it. What is what a um, opening year in his in the Bok jersey. He really has shown that he has the talent and the skill to bring forward. So yeah, I think all the best for him. And let's hold thumbs that he t he can take it away. Uh, he's one of three players selected. So let's see if he can take it away. At the I think it's end of next month that they're going to be selecting that. So congratulations to him. So yeah, let's move it. So England first. Uh, some of the big players there. There's a lot of changes in the English team. A lot of players are very tired. You can see that they can't select a lot of them due to just having a grueling season. English, I think, is probably one of the, the most grueling seasons in rugby at the moment. There's a lot of things in world rugby to try and combat that, so we'll see if that helps. But at the moment, it's, I think it's tough to be an English, uh, playing in the English Premier and then trying to play for the national team. But yeah, because of that, there's still a couple of things. We've got Courtney Laws. For me, he's, he's quite a great player. He's a big lock. He's coming in. He hasn't played a ton, but he's coming in. He's a big lock. Northampton isn't doing well, but I think he is an exception to the rule there. Really has some uh, skill. Good at lineouts. Very uh, tall and lanky guy, and I think he, he'll have a great impact for, for England. Uh, you've also got Ben Morgan stepping up for Vinopola. He's had a pretty good season, and I think he'll actually be able to hold his own there. If he can, it'll be a great um, buffer for uh, England's depth next year so let's see how that grows and it's not it's not a bad thing for England to just continue growing their depth in their team. Owen Farrell obviously is always going to be on the list. I know that there's a couple of people questioning uh, who else should be there but I feel Owen Farrell is definitely a good choice. He really uh, guides the game well. He has had a couple of shaky games so far this year but I think the whole English team has. I think it's not the players fault at the moment it's the culture so I think that'll be it. Other player to definitely watch there is obviously Ben Youngs. He really has an X factor and when he gets the ball in space he can do something amazing with it. So those are my players that I think you should watch for England but overall it's actually quite an interesting team. I've been, we've been discussing it down in my previous videos and I've been discussing it online that actually the overall English team is I think it's actually a good thing this 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 tour for them they can really try some new players and build their depth I think there's been a lot of change and I think South Africa should be wary it's not the same team that played in the in the June international so let's see how it goes next France um, I'm not exactly sure how this, what French team is going to pitch up it's so tough um, they've already fired a lot of their coaches they've changed a lot of their team and even a lot of the team that played in this uh, New Zealand test are not coming over so it'll be interesting to see but I do want to uh, highlight just two players Wesley uh, Fofana I think he's done very well he, he played in the last test for uh, over their captain and he did some he did pretty well there overall I'm not sure obviously it's tough to say was it just a dead rubber that helped it but he has had a pretty good season and I think he's definitely somebody who's watched it done so definitely uh, it's what am I saying at center so definitely interesting to see and I think he'll grow well there Okay, so uh, next, I think Louis Picomolds is probably also somebody very, very interesting. He plays well at number, at number eight. He's a secure player. He controls the scrum, the scrum very well. So I think for those two players definitely will be the bedrock of the French team, although there's a couple of other players, and you never know what team's going to pitch up, so that is always a danger one to watch. Uh, on to Scotland. There's a couple of interesting ones here. I've got uh, Laidlaw, who is... His scrum control and his ability to keep the, the, the Scottish team a little bit calmer is what I do enjoy about him. I think it's why he's one of the better choices at scrummies. He, he has uh, the, definitely the ability to calm, slow it when it needs to be, speed it up, something that I feel Fred Priya needs to sometimes bring into his game. He does very well. Considering the pace of the Scottish attack and the way that the Scottish play, it's sometimes good just to have a player there, especially in that pivotal position, just controlling the game and making sure that the when, when it's only when it's needed is that pace injected. Otherwise, you tire out a team and you don't get anywhere. Um, Alex Dunbar, I think, uh, and Hugh Jones are probably some of the uh, one of the best centre pairings in the tournament at the moment, in the world at the moment. I think Ireland and New Zealand are on, pay, on par with them. I definitely have a well. A prepared centre pairing and definitely I think some there's something that works a lot of attacks from Scotland come from that base so interesting to see how they go about it then we got uh, Blake Kinghorn I, I think he 
is replacing Stuart Hogg, so it's going to be interesting to see how that actually plays into it. I think he has had a good season and is definitely not to be worried about, but Stuart Hogg is a stunning player and, you, and really was a, a bedrock for Scotland, so I hold thumbs to him. I think he is going to definitely uh, step up and show his quality there. And then lastly, the Wales game. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of ones here. Alan Wayne Jones, for example, is a heavy hitting second rower. I think he really has got a lot of quality there. He really makes sure that he can uh, keep the team going forward. And when he gets the ball, he always has something interesting to do with it. He, I feel he does do a couple of good, uh, interesting moves there. Then we've got Jonathan Davies at centre also. Uh, centre pairing with, even with Parks, also a very good one. They really know how to, uh, to, to play well together. And it's a strength from both Scottish and Wales team that they have a pretty decent centre pairing. Although I feel it's not as rested in the, in the Welsh side. Then, uh, obviously, Lee Halfpenny, always a great player, really, really good. On the other hand, we've also got, uh, we don't have uh, Philatau and we don't have Warburton. It's going to be interesting to see how they, without them, how it affects the Welsh, Welsh team. They really are, the, Warburton was, was really the captain and the, the brains behind the Welsh operation. And I think they have come over that quite well, but it has, and if you look at this season, they're doing exceptionally well. But let's hold thumbs and see how uh, and let's see how they do. They are probably the toughest game that South Africa will be facing in this tournament. Interestingly, Luke Morgan coming from sevens to play for Wales, also going to be a great guy to watch. I think he's electric on his feet. So yeah, I think overall what the Welsh team is definitely with some interesting players. On that, I'd like to give some pre uh, uh, predictions for the for, for these games before the teams come out. I will be adjusting them as the teams go out to see how uh, how I feel the, old, the teams alter. But for right now. The English game, I think South Africa will take it by about 10 to 15, uh, unless the English team changes hugely, I'll be interested to see. Um, on that, we've also got French team, I think, depending on the team that pitches up, I think South Africa will take it, and I think it'll actually be a pretty comfortable victory, not about even 15 to 20, especially if it's the same team that pitches up against the French, uh, against New Zealand, I don't think they were that great. Um, and then also, after that, we've got... The, uh, the Scottish game, I think Scotland really up and coming and really good. So I, I'm hoping for a between 5 and 10 South Africa win. The Welsh game, that is probably the toughest game of the tournament. And I think South Africa will be hoping for a, a 1 or 2 win. And it possibly could be a loss. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold fast for a, a 1 or 2 point win on that one. But yeah, thanks guys for joining me. Please comment down below. Please share. Please like if you enjoy my videos. And yeah, let's discuss it down below. Let's get it enjoying these games. Thanks guys.